Let's go. Part number three. Next, the old silent blocks come out and new ones go in. Here are the narrow silent blocks from the LI family. We're installing the wide BGM silent blocks. Better handling, less vibration. Heat is crucial to being able to dismantle and assemble it. So the first thing we need to do is heat up the engine housing properly. Okay, we've now heated up the engine housing in the joint production. Then we'll see if we can get the silent block out. To do this, we'll use the tool. We should be able to push it out with that. Then we'll see if we can do it or not. That makes a pretty good impression. There it is. Out it is. Awesome. That looks pretty good. Don't burn our fingers. So, we've now done the following. We've made a mark to show where the top is when the engine is hanging in the frame, we've removed the mark here and the arrow on it is the indication. There is a left and a right side, we are now on the left in the direction of travel. This is the softer of the two synth blocks and it goes in here like this. To do this we warm up the engine housing again, then take the misery block assembly tool. There is a plate here that rests against the selenium block. There is a corresponding disc that has a recess for this reinforcement in the engine housing. That means it is placed on top like this. The land block goes in like this and we then pull it into position once the housing is warm. Very simple. Let's take it home. Do you always put it in dry and without grease, right? Yes, you can grease it too, but as I said, when it's nice and warm it slides in like this. It's in exactly like this. We'll do the same with the other side now. Dot. Warm up the housing a bit and then off we go. So, the gearbox is in, the cylinder is on. Now we'll fit the clutch, fit the pinion at the front, the chain tensioner and the chain so that the power can be transmitted. We'll start with the clutch spider and the clutch pinion. So, now we start installing the clutch. First the clutch compensation or thrust washer. Then we put in the clutch pinion with clutch spider and the brass bushing. We have to make sure that the teeth work. It does, everything rotates, and now we tighten it down. The world disc and clutch nut go on top. It has a 22 mm wrench size. Do you glue it in? No, I don't glue it in. Well, you can glue it in. Err, my experience has been that with the correct tightening torque it holds. Now we just have to make sure that the clutch holder stays in position and works. And now we tighten it once with 75 newtonum. So, the clutch is secure and now we put the pinion on at the front next. This has the advantage that we can now use the clutch to block the pinion later so that we can tighten it. Clutch is in. Now we'll do the front pinion, assemble it. First the oil thrower disc goes on, then the drive sleeve goes on the teeth. Then the pinion itself. In this case, that's a 16 pinion. The abutment goes on there. Then we have a reinforced switch spring. We'll use the T5R spring. And then the hat with the teeth goes on, which is then tightened with the bolt. You have to be a bit careful that the teeth really mesh. As soon as you feel a bit of resistance when tightening, it's best to loosen it, move it, and start again. Then it goes on really easily. One thing you can do is take a pen and roughly mark the position as a guide, that actually always helps quite well.
Put the bolt in, try to hold it in place. There, it's on. What we still need to do is, as soon as we can compress it via the clutch, as soon as we can block it via the clutch, we need to tighten it here with the correct torque. To do this, we now install the chain tensioner next and block it via the clutch, tighten it and then we're done. Next we fit the performance chain tensioner. Like some others, you can use this to push the chain up or pull it down. To fit it, first an adapter is built into the engine casing and then the chain tensioner goes on top of it later. The adapter comes with two different Allen screws, a shorter one and a longer one. We'll start with the longer one. If it doesn't block, we'll glue it in with medium strength logged it. If it does block, the shorter one is included. We'll take a look at that now. So, the lower one has already gripped. Now we'll see if it blocks. Yes, it does block. That means we need the shorter one in this case because it still has some play. Exactly. Now let's take the shorter one and see if it can be tightened properly. Yes, it can be tightened with that. Then we'll add a bit of lock T. Both Allen screws are there. The loading jam on the Loctite isn't going away today. That's a bit generous. So, the 81 IVIS chain is on. You have to remember to check it after 1000 kilometers. It shouldn't really stretch, but you should check it after 1000 kilometers. What we're going to do now is mount the chain guide. It goes on here and is glued in place with two Allen screws. We'll adjust the chain tension as soon as the bushings are on. Bottles. That's enough for two. That's definitely enough for two. Now we're going to make sure we've got a bit of play here. A bit of play there. Err, it's being pushed down anyway. We're tightening the screws and that will close the connection from the cylinder. Exactly. And now we can block the clutch again and tighten this with 36 Newton. Here, 36 Newtonum. 36 Wonderful. And now we can theoretically and practically assemble the clutch and then we have closed the chapter. Very good. Let's move on. Next we mount the pressure plate. What we did here is because Kevin has a LISX cover and not a GPDL cover. It has a different pressure system. We mounted it for the LISX variant. It is secured from the back with a small saw ring. It comes with the clutch. And now we can begin. First the 10 springs go in place. There are different hardnesses. These are the green ones, the soft ones. They are for setups up to around 20 to 20 HP. Perfect. Leverage is okay. Stop and go is scary. What oil are you using on the clutch? Err. You can use SAE 80 BGMO, Castrol TTX, that's what I use, but yes. Okay. So, now alternate between cork and steel discs. A bit of oil doesn't do any harm. Six of them. 
What you need to bear in mind when assembling is that in order to have enough space for the Kickstarter shaft, the upper steel clutch disc is angled to give a bit more space for the engine cover. So, and this is the angled disc. It goes with the angle pointing downwards. So, and put the cover disc on it, the saw ring on it. That holds the whole thing together. And now we have to compress the clutch. There are two methods. I'll first show you the one that's easier for the workshop, with the clutch compressor. Then I'll show you again how you can assemble it with the integrated clutch compressor on the BGM clutch. That's also really easy. But this is quicker. Ultimately, it is mounted on two engine housing studs. Then the clutch is compressed. You can hear the spring settling. So, now we thread it in. As we all know, strength lies in calmness. So, there's still a bit to be done. The springs have settled. We'll check that again in a moment. And now we put the locking ring in. So, after a lot of wrangling, after a lot of wrangling, it's in place. Now we'll check again to make sure there's enough play in the clutch. It should move up by about 1 to 2 millimeters and there should be 1 millimeter of play for it to work. It's now fully compressed and the millimeter of play is there. That's good. Okay, clutch in. 